former boss, my friend, and my mentor, John Chambers. Thank you, John. Thank you. Very often, people talk about the past, and it is the past. But at Cisco, what we've done that I think no other company in the Valley has done is we stay true to our basic principles as a company. Those principles are around being customer-driven, Kirk, as you said it so well, and Don said it in his comments. The principles, you compete not against competitors, but you compete on market transitions. And you measure the result versus the competitors. And then we move to combining products in architectures to focus on a speed of innovation that no one else could do. We had the courage, bordering on, at times, almost dreaming, to set outlandish goals that no one else could even think was possible, change the way the world works, lives, learns, and plays, be number one or number two in every product area with a minimum of 40% market share off of open standards with Larry, great gross margins, to match that, and the ability to learn how to do something John did day one when I came to Cisco, to teach culture through stories. But one of the reasons that I'm so fired up about what we're doing here is without an ability to tie the history to the future and without a common set of principles behind it, it things really get lost. We were in some bumps in 2014. A number of people around this room remember this. And I was with a new group of Cisco team and I was sparing them up and saying, here's how we're going to come through this and we'll come out of it stronger than any other time. And we did. And I was really talking about 2001 and you remember what it was like and here's what we did. And I realized almost no one in the room was at Cisco in 2001. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the dog's up and huh? <laughs> so taking the founding principles and tying them back in a logical approach to the future where culture has been from day one, what Cisco did, including today, corporate social responsibility, that John really championed. 